10.2 monthly payment and total interest. Um, so yesterday, or no, two days ago, we talked about um, how much you have to finance. Like if you made a down payment, how much would you have to finance in buying a home? Today we're actually going to find out what that monthly payment is, how much you have paid altogether, and then how much interest have you been charged because you don't have the money to write out a check for a home, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure not very many people do have enough money to do that. So maybe if it's a smaller item purchase, you could write out a check for it, like a, a cheaper car or you know something like that. But a home is an expense that, that you generally will have to um, get a loan for. Um, why is it wise to shop around when looking for a lender? Um, if you have your bank and they're charging 8% interest and the bank down the street charges 6 which one do you think you should go to? The lower percent. So you don't have to pay as much interest. So um, mainly the your bank will probably do as much for you as they can. They probably have some different lenders that they go with and then they would help you choose the, the lesser price. But when you're borrowing a lot of money, you wanna go with the least um, percent that you can because you'll be paying less interest. Um, what are some things other than cost that you should consider before buying a home? Buying a home is a big price. So are you gonna stay there for a long, long time? Okay, or are you just looking for somewhere to stay for a year and then you're going to move on? Okay, if you're only looking for a year, probably don't buy a house, especially if it's in an area where it may not sell very quickly. Okay, what is the market like? Um, are homes selling well? Are they not selling well? What are the interest rates like? Things like that. So um, also, if you are moving in to something and you have to do a lot of work in there, you know, like you're gonna redo the whole thing. You know, I mean, do you have time and, and the money to actually do that? Or is it one where you're gonna buy it and you're just gonna walk in and it's livable? Okay, so those kinds of things um, are actually things you should consider. Most of the time, your mortgage loans are from 20, 25, or 30 years. They don't do, for instance, 23 years, 19 years, some weird numbers like that. Usually they go incre increments of five starting at 20. Um, here's the formulas. They do look kind of like formulas that we've used before. I'll, I'll say that when I actually do one. And here's the first example. Um, before I go through this, um, we built our home in 2001, moved in December 2001. Um, I think our mortgage loan was 25 years. It could have been 30. I don't remember what we set it up for. Um, I don't think it was 20 though. Um, the question I'm asking is, can you make for instance, double payments or payments more than what the actual payment amount is. Could you, for instance, send $200 more or $500 more if you wanted? You can. Anytime you can pay extra, do that because what happens is the amount that you borrowed becomes less and at the end you owe less interest then. So when we did ours, let's say it was 25 years because I'm just guessing, I think it was 25. Um, we paid ours off in 11. Okay, so we had 14 years or 19 years that we did not have to make payments on this house. Do you think we saved a bunch of money by doing that? Yes, we did. So anything extra, even if it doesn't think, if you don't think it even matters, anything extra will make that balance go down. Um, maybe make a double payment every now and then, or maybe send 300 more dollars or something like that if you can make it happen. If you can't, then obviously don't stretch it so that you don't have any money left to pay anything else. But when you can, pay extra to make that interest go down at the end. And I think you'll kind of realize why when you see the amount of interest on this particular loan right here. So $280, that's kind of a, a good range of, you know, a pretty nice home in this area. Um, they have 9% interest. That's not a good percentage. That's a pretty high one. Um, I should actually look up, when I'm done, I'll look up what the interest rates are right now. Um, when we did our loan, it was 6.75, and that was pretty high for the time. Um, when we were at probably like eight or nine years in, the interest rates went down quite a bit. I think they went down to like 4.25. 
we actually refinanced ours so that we wouldn't have to pay as much interest. It takes some time to get the paperwork done. You do have to pay for the paperwork to be done because they have to do it. Um, but in the long run, even paying that extra for the paperwork saved us a lot of money. So our percentage went from 6.75 to 4.25. And I think they're even less right now. Um, maybe climbing back up, I don't know. But that also saves you money. So refinancing doesn't mean you can't pay for it. It means you're gonna save a bunch of money by doing that because the interest rates are lower. Um, so you know, don't take that as a, you know, a personal insult or anything that you do that. It just means you're going to save a bunch of money and why not? So that's what we did. Um, so this loan is for 30 years, 9%. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the table on 2377. You're going to go all the way down to the bottom to 9%, go all the way over to 30 years. And the number you're looking at is $8.05. So when you find that monthly payment, this is part of it. The other part is you're going to take your loan and divide it by a thousand because if you look at the title of that table, it's a monthly payment for a $1,000 loan. Basically, they're making it easier for you so the table's smaller without all those zeros in there. So you're going to take the loan amount, divide it by a thousand because that's what the table tells us to do and that's what the formula says and we're going to multiply to find out what their um, monthly payment is. Now, one other thing that you could do is when you divide by a thousand, aren't you just canceling three zeros out? If you take three zeros off of that and three zeros off of that, you can write that down as well. So if you take 280 times $8.05, you are fine. You don't have to actually divide by a thousand every time. But you have to take equal amounts of zeros off of each part. So 280 times 805 is $2,254. That's a pretty big house payment. Um, if the house payment is too big, um, this is the top of the line when you're talking about mortgages, 30 years. Maybe you should shop for a different house that's a little bit cheaper um, if you can't make $2,254 a month work. you know. So how many times do you get paid? Um, if you split or if you get paid twice a month, could you come up with that amount? Also, another thing to think about when you're getting a loan is, when should the loan be due? If you get paid on the 15th and you have the loan due on the 1st, is that a good idea? It's going to come out of there before you even get paid. You know, if you get paid twice, maybe you get paid on the 1st and then on the 15th and you want it due after that, like maybe the 20th, so that both your paychecks are in your account. So think about that. Don't put it on a day that you don't have money. Make sure you consider when you get paid and all that good stuff too. Now, how much would they have paid altogether? If their payment is $2,254, they're gonna make that every single month, which is 12, for 30 years. Okay, so 12 months times 30 times the uh, monthly payment. $811,440. So this is where your eyes should kind of bug out of your head because they borrowed 280000 This is how much you end up paying. $811,440. That's a lot of money, right? That's like three of your homes together. That's why buying a home is a huge purchase that should be, you know, shouldn't be considered lightly because you're paying a lot extra because you don't have the money and no one does. I shouldn't say no one. There's rich people that do, but most people, this is like probably the biggest purchase that they will make unless you farm because then uh, this is probably one and a half pieces of equipment, <laughs> you know? So um, when you're talking a home though, for most people, that's your biggest purchase unless you buy a business or, you know, you have bigger expenses like that in there. So how much interest would they have paid? You take how much you paid and you subtract out that loan amount. Or if they make a down payment, what is the amount after that, okay, that they're actually getting the loan for? This one, they did not make a down payment. So we're gonna subtract those two. And I think it's over $500,000. $531,000. So making little payments here and there 
will make that $530,000 go down and you wouldn't have to pay as much interest on that because you won't owe as much. Okay, so look at the table at the beginning, find your number. So you're gonna go down to the percentage rate over to 20, 25, or 30 years, write it down, that's my 805. Take it times, well, usually it's the first three numbers, but if it isn't, um, cross off three zeros on the top, cross off three zeros on the bottom, um, and you can divide it if you want to, to find that monthly payment. Take that times 12 times the total number of years. Don't forget that part. If you do and the loan amount is bigger, um, that's going to be a problem because your loan amount should be the smaller of the two amounts, not the bigger. Um, if it is, then you forgot to multiply it times the number of years. And then subtract it to find out how much interest is owed. Um, it's a lot of money. Um, a big, big purchase that you guys will be considering someday. Um, I was gonna say I never did sit down and find out how much money we saved um, I should have um, I just knew that we saved a lot of money by paying you know more than we um, more than just the payment was at the time so anything extra also helps with that